And welcome back. Neighborhood Coalition for Shelter helps New Yorkers who are struggling with homelessness to achieve their highest level of independence. They create innovative solutions and engage community partners to provide housing and support that can transform lives. Joining us to share more details, we've got the Chief Executive Officer of Neighborhood Coalition for Shelter, Ann L. Shaloff, and, uh, and glad to have you with us. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, as I think about the holidays, I think about the winter season, uh, we know the homeless is front and center because uh, this is an underserved population that sometimes find themselves very challenged, but you find yourself dealing with them very much on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, share with us a little bit about where we are right now with regards to homelessness and how you see it. Well, I think right now we are really at a, at a moment of crisis with respect to homelessness. Uh, Homelessness is, I believe, at its highest rate since we started tracking those numbers. And um, we, it's been exacerbated by so many factors. Uh, after COVID, the lifting of the eviction moratorium, the influx of migrants from uh, down south, I, I think we're really at a time where it, it's uh, at, at its most extreme. Yeah. Well, Neighborhood Coalition for Shelter does great work with the homeless population. Uh, for those who don't know about the shelter, please give us some information about what you do and who you serve. We provide a combination of supportive housing and non-residential services. So we operate two and actually a third just open, but two supportive residences. One houses individuals who've been chronically homeless. And there they can find permanent housing along with the on-site supports that will help them live there stably. So we have all sorts of social services there. Social workers can provide uh, recreation, benefits counseling, mental health counseling or access to mental health counseling, medication monitoring, and a host of other services. We also have another residence in the Bronx for young adults who've either aged out of foster care with nowhere to go or who've been homeless and suffer from a mental illness or a substance use disorder. And there our goal is to really place them in housing where they can stay as long as they need to until they're ready to transition to adulthood and independence. We also just recently, in the last few weeks, opened a residence for homeless college students these are students who were going to school while they were living in shelter or in illegal unheated apartments or sleeping on the train or somebody's couch. And our goal there is to really help them be able to live stably and complete their degrees so they no longer need our help. Yeah. In terms of non-residential services, we have a substance use clinic that is specifically for people who are homeless, they can be on the street, they can be in shelter, they can be in supportive housing. And our goal there is really to help them make whatever changes they're ready and able to make. As sure. you can imagine, oh, I'm no, sorry. I'm sorry, no, I wanted to just cut in and talk about that because when you talk about the various populations, you talk about a college population, you talked about different groups of people. Uh, but when we look at the homeless today, I think there's a difference between what we traditionally would view uh, in some people's minds, it's homeless. You talked about homeless college students. We talked about homeless families. Um, we're not talking about just, you know, down and destitute, the ones that we've always heard about. Really what we're seeing and the emergence of homelessness are just everyday people who just struggled upon hard times. That's exactly right. There, there are misconceptions about who are, quote unquote, the homeless. I think we're all familiar with the person that we see, you know, in a doorway muttering to himself or herself. And that is the most vulnerable individual. And that's what many of us see and associate with homelessness. And those are people who are very much in need of help and very hard to help. But the overwhelming majority of people who are homeless are not those people. And I, believe if my uh, data is up to date, something close to a third of homeless families have a working family member. 
So we don't think about the homeless as somebody who might be commuting with you to work or sitting next to you, you know, in the library in college. But many, many people are, you know, just a paycheck away or an illness away from being homeless. Yeah. So 40 years, uh, you've been doing the work. There's a 40th anniversary. Uh, as you look at the 40th anniversary, how do you feel? I feel great pride. Uh, of course, I wasn't here 40 years ago, but very proud of this organization and our founders who saw the challenge of homelessness. You know, these were faith and community leaders uh, on the Upper East Side who saw people literally sleeping on their steps and said, you know, this cannot be, we have to do something. And so these organizations at, at the time, all volunteers uh, banded together and established our organization. And it gives me great pride that we continue the tradition of helping our neighbors and of developing innovative solutions and not being able to, not being afraid to tackle a challenge. At the same time, I feel that it's incredibly tragic that now that I'm leading this organization, I look around and I think the situation is only worse. I don't think our founders ever imagined that 40 years later, our work would be me needed more than ever and that so little progress in some ways would have been made. Yeah, you know, I, I think about my time here and how we've covered homelessness and it definitely has gotten to a place where the numbers continue to rise and as the more you have New Yorkers moving and uh, you see some people who are actually moving out, can't afford living in the city, uh, and then you've got other people who are just struggling on hard times and uh, can't maintain rent and before you know it, they really have nowhere to go. When you look at your population, how do you get the numbers that you get in terms of reaching people? Uh, because I do understand you have a, a CHIRP program, and I probably want you to speak to that too, about how the referrals come to you that you're able to meet the needs of so many people. Well, I, I'm very happy to speak about the CHIRP program. Um, and we've actually renamed it NCS Connect, and I'll talk about how we connect in just a moment. Um, our referrals, though, more and more are coming uh, through a centralized process in the city that is designed to identify the most vulnerable people who are awaiting housing and connect them with appropriate supportive housing. You know, what we do is supportive housing, which is distinct from affordable housing um, in general, in that we provide services to people who have an identified need, whether it's a mental illness or a substance use disorder. So they, people are identified through city, organ, through city agencies and referred to us as being eligible and meeting uh, the requirements to live in our residences. The CHIRP program, Community Human Services Information and Referral Program, is designed to be a program that has no barriers and that can provide resources and information to people who might otherwise not connect with any social services. So we send a social worker to free dinner programs. Uh, we generally operate the program on the Upper East Side uh, where we were founded. Uh, it was on hiatus during COVID, but is just now coming back to in-person services. And our social worker is there to answer questions, provide advice, referrals, guidance to anybody. You don't even have to give your name. So somebody who you know, may be undocumented or may have a mental illness that makes them afraid to interact with you know, somebody who's official, can come to us, ask a question, ask for help, and you don't have to give us any other information, and we will try to connect you with the services that you need. So that is a, that is a service that we, we really feel is designed in some ways to be a first step in helping people connect with resources. And our social worker, um, you know, certainly before COVID and now that in-person meal programs are resuming, 
will be at a different site each night and will become a familiar figure so that more and more he or she can connect with people there and the, and you know people will be willing to approach and ask for help. Yeah. And Shalof, we got to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. The great work that you're doing and really helping a population that really in this time uh, needs as much service as possible because as we know, winter's upon us, the cold weather's upon us, and uh, more and more people are actually out on the streets. Thanks for the work that you're doing. And Shalof, Chief Executive Officer for a Neighborhood Coalition for Shelter. Thanks for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. All righty. Well, if you want more information, what we, do, what we do is we encourage you to visit their website. Now, the website is ncsinc.org. Again, ncsinc.org. Then you can also follow them on Facebook at Neighborhood Coalition for Shelter. Don't go anywhere. We've got more show coming up. Open. We'll be right back right after this.